Um, Perfect. Thanks, Michael. Always on it with the recording. Um, so my name is Adrian Rand. I'm president of the Oak Park Neighborhood Association. And I, I think we'd like to start today by doing a round of intros um, and then getting into the topic, the, the main topic at hand, talking about the, the reuse of the Sacramento Food Bank and Family Services buildings in Oak Park, and then go into um, other announcements. So um, in terms of, of introductions, maybe just share your name and your, either your affiliation or where you are in the neighborhood. And I'll start with Blake. Hi, guys. Blake Young, Sacramento Food Bank and Family Services. Thank you. Jay. Jay Chenier, City Council. Thank you. Barbara. Uh, Barbara Steinberg. I live in Talic Village, and I'm also on the Stockton Boulevard Partnership Board. Thanks. Kathy. Hi, everyone. My name is Kathy. I am a lifelong resident of Oak Park. I live near American Legion, happy takeout area. Nice to meet everyone. Kelsey. Hello, my name is Kelsey. I use she, her pronouns. I'm the women's wellness coordinator at Wellspring Women's Center. I'm also a lifelong resident of Oak Park and a former employee of the food bank. Hi, Blake. Hi, Kelsey. <laughs> Go to Michael Blair next. Hey everybody, Michael Blair, um, board member of PNA. Good to see everybody. Joni. Hi. Joni Titherington, uh, resident, former OPNA board member and member. Thank you. Caesar. Hi, Caesar Dennis from UC Davis Health. Thank you. I have Zoom user. Zoom user. All right, we'll come back to you. Let's go to Alex. Hello, everybody. My name is Alex Hopes. We will organize as owner manager. Recently relocated back to Sacramento a few years ago, looking to get involved locally. You guys keep popping up on my radar, so I thought I'd come check y'all out. Yeah, thank you. Casey. Hi, I am a journalist at the Sacramento Observer, um, and I also live on 4th Ave. I live on 4th Ave as well. Neighbors. Uh, Kevin. Hi, my name is Kevin Buffino. I'm the Director of Communications at, Director of Communications at Sacramento Food Bank and Family Services. Stephanie. Stephanie Thompson with the Community Wellness Forum and also a member of City Church, and we serve the Oak Park area. Thank you. Crystal. Hi, Crystal Smith, CEO of NeighborWorks Sacramento, um, located in the Oak Park. Uh, Bishop. Good evening, everybody. Bishop Chris Baker, South Sacramento Community Advocate and Education Advocate. And the Raiders is playing the light tonight, so let's move it on. <laughs> Raider Nation. <laughs> Darnell. Hey, Darnell with Habitat for Humanity, Greater Sacramento. Good to see everyone. Thank you. Dan. Mr. Fontenot, want to unmute? All right, well, let's go to Shandinia. Hello, Shandina Piper, Naval Works Sacramento. Hello, everyone. Thank you. And then last but not least, we have a Talanga UUMC. Want to unmute and introduce yourself. Oh, it's actually Rosalie. <laughs> I think right. my husband must have been logged in for this, <laughs> for church. Gotcha. Yes. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Well, and so hey, Adrian, uh, if, I, if I could really quickly, uh, just an, an, a very brief announcement that once we clear paperwork, Joni is going to be uh, joining our team for the remainder of, the, of my term. Congrats. What an opportunity. That's a, very exciting. Yay. Joni, you have anything to say about that? <laughs> I'm just excited to join the team. Uh, and uh, help uh, Jay close out his fantastic term uh, and excited to be working with folks in Oak Park and uh, 
uh, the surrounding areas. Very cool. All right, a few more folks have joined us. Uh, I see Elizabeth's iPhone. You want to introduce yourself? Hi. Excuse me. No, you're good. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer Muir. Like to introduce yourself. You're muted. Sorry about that. Hi, I'm Jennifer Muir. I live in Oak Park. Um, what else would you like to know? That's that's good enough. Um, Great. And last last but not least, Allison Joe. Hi there, Allison Joe. I'm with Councilmember Schneer's office. Uh, I live uh, just close to uh, Oak Park. I'm I'm with an eyes eyes view of it. So good to see you all. Thank you. So the, the main topic we wanted to focus on uh, for today was the, the Sacramento Food Bank and Family Services buildings in, in Oak Park and the forthcoming sale of those buildings. And I know, um, I believe it was late June when that was announced um, that the consolidation was going to happen in North Sac at, at the Food Bank facility. But maybe uh, Blake and then Jay, could you maybe just kind of give an overview for folks who, I know there was a community meeting in late June, but... Could you kind of just contextualize things briefly for us? Jay, you want to go? No, please go ahead. Yeah, so thanks, Adrian. Um, yeah, so we are consolidating our operations up to the north area. Um, we are going to focus, obviously, on our food bank operations. Uh, for most of you heard this last time, I, I'm sorry to be redundant, but we took a really long look during the pandemic at you know what, what we as an organization needed to focus on. And we are a food bank. And in 2014, we actually became a regional food bank. To put that in perspective, uh, prior to 2014, we were providing food to about 23,000. Uh, now we're providing food to a quarter million. And so with that scale, uh, and all the good work being done in the family services kind of space, we, we decided for sustainability reasons mainly, and the fact that we don't believe that food resources in our region, and again, um, we serve the county, we don't serve just Oak Park, we serve everybody in the county, that uh, we are going to focus on that. What we did do is we have brought our parent education program, uh, our utility assistance program with SMUD, our refugee and immigration work with us. And uh, we are in the process of building out office space at the food bank. For those of you that haven't been there, we have 120,000 square foot facility with about 25,000 feet of office space. So huge area. Uh, and we those are the programs we're bringing over. Now, in terms of timeline, um, there may be you know a little bit of miscommunication in terms of what people think the timeline is and and what we actually know to be the timeline which there's a little gray area there so right now what's happening in oak park is we are providing we're still providing emergency services as i had said in uh june we built out the calendar for um august um and the emergency services to be very specific are we are working with community-based organizations, lots of them, uh, to provide clothing, mainly clothing and parenting resources, baby uh, supplies, diapers, et cetera, uh, for um, emergency services through CBOs. So for example, the, the school district might call us and have a client or a family that needs help. The actual school district facilitates that they come down and get the, the goods um, and, and, and provide that to the family. So we're gonna continue to do that through August and September. And uh, by the time September ends, we believe those emergency services will be wound down. At the same time, we're building out our administration offices on Bell Avenue up at our food bank campus and um, it, when that's done, and you know, obviously we don't know, we don't have a buyer for the, the property right now, so we really don't know the timeline. Um, but as soon as we build this out, we'll continue to wind down services in Oak Park. Our goal really is, is to work with our community partners, and we have a lot of them, um, to basically hand over all of the goods that are 
basically at our Radder Brothers building, uh, and then the consolidation will happen. Uh, for some of you that that were not at June, uh, we're not at the June meeting. Just just one other thing I would mention is for some people don't realize that we haven't served food in Oak Park for ten years. Um, our operation went what I would call on the wholesale side, and we're providing food to 150 agencies throughout Sacramento County. We have nine food agencies in Sacramento. We have Temple of Prayer. We have G7. We have Williams Memorial Church. We have Promised Land Ministries, Christ Chapel Ministries, Shiloh Baptist. We have Youth Explosion over at the Oak Park Community Center. We have Cash, and we have New St. Bethel Baptist Church. Those are our feeding programs in Oak Park. We will continue to support them. In fact, we are looking at growing capacity for those uh, food agencies that want to. And we're actively looking for additional partners in the Oak Park area that may want to take some of this other family service uh, work on that we could hand over or we could provide some sort of guidance. Um, I had said in June that we are uh, willing with some active players to uh, provide some financial assistance short term uh, if folks are interested in building capacity, whether it's food, whether it's clothing. Uh, on the education side, um, you know, there's a lot of great players there. Uh, and then on our parenting side, for those of you that weren't at June, um, we became, uh, it, it might sound funny, but we became a national diaper bank. Uh, there's only about 20 in the country. And so our parenting program actually transitioned to the North area where we're using our food bank model, much like a wholesaler. And rather than 150 clients showing up a month, getting diapers and education services, we're now providing diapers to about 55 to 60 agencies throughout the county. And in, in Oak Park specifically, we work with Birth and Beyond, La Familia. There's, there's a lot of organizations that do that. So that, that's kind of what's going on. The timeline is kind of up for grabs right now because we don't know who the buyer uh, is, where there's interest. Uh, there are active people looking at it, um, but we want to take our time and make sure that uh, the goods that we have, that they go and they, they go to the right people, the right places. We continue to support the CBOs in the area. And then ultimately our goal as the food bank for the county is to continue to try to build up capacity in Oak Park, uh, particularly with our food program. But if there's other players uh, that want to dabble in the family services kind of part, that we can we can help them. Thanks for that overview, Jay. Yeah, thanks, Adrian. Um, so I, I want to be really transparent about what we've done, we being District 5 in the, in the city or what, what I'm trying to do out of our office. Um, I don't know if we'll be successful or not, but once uh, we understood that the food bank was consolidating its services, which I think uh, on the business model, and for those who don't know, I actually worked at the food bank for a couple of years back in the mid nineties. Um, I had Blake's job for one year and, and did some other work for another year. Um, it's grown exponentially and as the regional hub, really, of food, I think does a great job. What, what we looked at was how can we utilize the buildings that are there, kind of the campus that is there for a community good. Uh, the first thing we did is we held a community meeting and we got input from, uh, I think, about 25 or 30 individuals, some of you who are on this call. Um, and I, I know that Adrian and, and OPNA has followed up with a survey, which I think has shown very similar results. Since that time, we've had some conversations and based on some of the information that we received at, at that community meeting, we've had conversations with uh, Assembly Member McCarty's office to gauge his interest. And, and he does have an interest uh, in working with us in partnership. Uh, we did a tour. We brought our library folks over um, to take a look at it and, and see what they might need uh, as far as space. We brought SETA over to take a look at it around um, uh, child care, uh, particularly infant child care. Uh, that's, that's the need that they've identified here. Um, we have some other ideas for partners or potential partners. And the assembly member and I have started thinking about where the funds might be 
um, not only to potentially purchase the buildings, but um, uh, also for tenant improvements, which would be quite expensive. Um, so we are working on that. We hope that within a month or two, um, if no one else has purchased everything and, and Blake has been very nice in, in selling us, I mean, he wants to see a good community use there as well. So uh, we will be very public again and looking for folks um, who might be interested in going there. It needs to be self-supporting over time. So we'll need to take a look at that, but we have a really successful model at Fruit Ridge Community Center. Michael Blair could talk about that. Um, we have some successful models, other, other places where neighborhoods have actually taken over something and, and made it work, uh, Curtis Park being another example of that. So that's where we are. We're gonna continue working at it, um, hope to, and, and we will keep people informed as, as we try to move forward. Thanks for that. Um, I know I have a couple of clarifying questions and I'm sure others do. So the, the McCarty, that was, was that like a district office for assembly member McCarty? No, we talked to the assembly member. Okay. And about and his district office about partnering. Uh, there, there is money in last year's budget and this year's budget uh, to use for community use that he has discretion over. Um, last year's money has taken forever to come out. Uh, it still has not been appropriated, I guess, or, or, or spent. Um, he had some money that was put in there specifically for childcare. Uh, and then he has a larger amount this year as part of the surplus. Uh, he, he received some dollars. Uh, we don't know the timing of that as well, but again, he has discretion over those dollars. And that could go into potentially like rehabbing the building or doing something else. It could, that's correct. So what, what we're going to try to do over the next month is look for additional potential partners um, and also put together a financing plan um, that we think might fly with the city, with, with the assembly member and others. And we're working with his office to do that in partnership. Okay. So Thank you all you know as much as I know at this point. All right. Well, I, I wanted to just briefly go over our survey results and then get into, a, I think, a more open discussion and allow time for, for questions as well. Um, I will share my screen briefly if that's all right. Um, so we, this is, these are just the top line survey results. So we, we, we did a Facebook survey, got, I think a couple hundred responses, but that was, wasn't, it was kind of hard to analyze that data. So we did a separate one, got received 90 responses, 76 of them from residents of 95817 or 20. And then you can see here kind of what, what folks prep preferences kind of centered on. So portable housing, biggest chunk, um, library, second largest. Um, mixed use commercial residential, and then followed by in a tie, a food oriented uh, thing, either a grocery store or a food hall or a jobs in a service center of some sort. Um, so that's kind of where our data ended up with. And then we also and have shared this through our Facebook page and we'll be sharing this via email as well. Um, this is just the raw data. So it includes some folks who provided specific recommendations um, around what to do with the site um, and just other thoughts. Um, so again, that's all, that's all, you know, available for, for everyone to take a look at. Um, I, I, I want to open it up for, I know there was one question from Barbara in the chat. I don't know if, if Barbara, you're able to, um, to go off mute and, and ask that. Um, I think it's about kind of part of, part of an earlier conversation we were having. Um, yeah. Hi, Blake. It's been a long time. I did that big article about you way back when, when you acquired the Gleaners bill. I, I remember. <laughs> So I was just wondering, you know, because obviously the family services portion of what the food bank provides in terms of the immigrant services and parenting classes and all those other things that you mentioned, if I remember correctly, the facility is a bit remote out in the other side of the county or something. So just wondering as far as those types of services, since many of these people that location is not transit friendly and or you know whatever how that might all play out i mean i think you're talking about possibly having somebody else take over some of that or something yeah so so let me back up so so our model now is really the wholesaler so so our job is and and i'm right for now i'm talking about our food program 
So being the regional food bank, as you remember, our primary responsibility is to try to build capacity in the network. So our job essentially to, to simplify it is we source and buy food. We basically repackage it and deliver it to about 120 agencies throughout the county. And I'm sticking to food for a minute. I'm, I, I'll get to your point because I think it's a great question. So, so given the pandemic, given how much demand there has been for food, that thing's exploded. So that, that, that's where most of our focus needs to be. Um, if, you, if you asked a food pantry in Meadowview or Oak Park, they'd say, oh my gosh, I want to make sure the Sacramento Food Bank can continue to get food to us. So that's really, really important. What, 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 our, what our family services, so well, let's kind of break down the family services. So if you think about, we had, we had five programs and we're, we're bringing over four of them. So we're bringing over six programs. I'm sorry, we're bringing over four of them. So our parent education program now is going to be countywide rather than serve residents. And we weren't just serving Oak Park folks in, in the parent education program. But to your point, transportation is a challenge for folks. So I'm going to I'm going to guess the majority of people that came to the parent education program were within five miles of, of Oak Park. Well, with that said, now we're going to serve the whole county. So anybody that was any parent education program, La Familia, Birth and Beyond, the school districts, I could go on and on. We're going to continue to partner with them. And there are some in Oak Park uh, who actually did perform more comprehensively than we did uh, in that space. Where we add value, again, we're talking parent education, is that now they're, they're going to continue to provide the counseling services, they're going to continue to provide the home visits, we can provide baby food, we can provide diapers and that sort of thing, much like our food bank model. Now, our adult education program that was quite robust actually was not as robust as a lot of other adult education programs in Sacramento County, mainly Highlands uh, and some others. And quite frankly, we saw pre-pandemic a significant decline in our enrollment, which which told us, and we looked at it, that there's a lot of there's a lot of good adult education going on in that space. So, you know, again, it, with our model, if there are adult education services that somehow want to do some sort of wraparound feeding program or parent education program, we're all ears. That's the way we're going to we're going to kind of play ball there. Our clothing program to me in terms of Oak Park is is the program that a lot of folks remember that they visit. And um, it's a wonderful program. And we uh, but that program cannot coexist with our food bank uh, for lots of reasons, health reasons, lots of reasons. But I, I do want to address a couple of things that you said. Being the wholesaler, we don't the public doesn't come to our food bank facility. Our primary job is to, is to add value to all the agencies that are doing that wonderful work. So that was never going to be the case. Um, so most regional food banks throughout the entire nation, in fact, 90% of, of food banks um, in the country are in rural area, I'm sorry, are in industrial areas. Why? Because they're bigger, they need more land and it's cheaper land. Um, so being the regional food bank, we really have to pay attention to that. That's 95% of our business. Um, so in the future, what we want to do is, as I had said earlier, evaluate the existing nonprofits in Oak Park, Sacramento County, but we're talking about Oak Park right now we're, because we're leaving and we have such a rich, rich history there. And we are open. I'm open as the CEO to listen to anybody that wants to partner with us to bolster services in the Oak Park area. And I mentioned we have nine food distribution organizations. I think that there are some people and, and nonprofits out there that, and we've had conversations that said, hey, would you like a slice of this clothing program, for example? If there are opportunities there, we would love to give our equipment away. We would love to provide some guidance there. I would even be willing to try to do a little bit of startup money with, with folks that may want to take that on. Um, if, I, if I was to evaluate the entire family services programs, I would say the clothing program has most of the rich tradition of folks in Oak Park accessing that. 
And we are all ears on how we might be able to hand that over. But I'm, I'm going to be very transparent. That program does not work at our, park, at our food bank facility. Now, the immigration and our, and our refugee program does work because we do it mostly remote. The public would not be coming there. And then our utility assistance program through SMUD is all remote. It's by phone and by Zoom. So again, it doesn't have a huge impact on the food bank operations because as you probably know, and remember, we have a lot of health and safety code things that we have to adhere to, not, not for the even Sacramento County, but Feeding America. So our goal again, Barbara, is to really evaluate and look at folks that want to continue some of that family service work. And by God, if we can help them in any way, we're going to do it. Thank you. That was great. I really appreciate all you're doing. Thank yeah, you. you. bet. Thank you. Yeah, and it would be great if folks, folks on this call have specific thoughts or recommendations about, about partner agencies and partner CBOs in the neighborhood that, that might be interested in scaling up their work with, with uh, folks in need. And like I just, I just wanted to summarize, because you had mentioned there were six family of the, the six categories of family services. I'm going to say them out loud and kind of so everyone can um, parent education. Yep. Adult ed. Yep. Uh, immigrant and refugee services. Uh, that's two. That's two. Oh, there's two. Immigrant services, refugee services. Yep. Um, utility assistance. Yep. And then the sixth one is clothing, and clothing is the one that you are discontinuing and and letting phase out, basically. And, and the and the adult education now. And adult education. Yes, those two. So those two. Okay. And so so if I could and and to to. And again, this is only my opinion, but there is a lot of great adult education going on. And, and just to let you know that um, a lot of the adult education that happens now, remember, we didn't serve any, any, any adult education services uh, during the pandemic. Highlands and some others are actually, they're amazing. And they're actually state certified and they actually provide a diploma and transition to community college. That is an area that we lacked. And, and I can just say part of the reason why it lacked is just, you know, we had to focus on the food bank side of it. Uh, but there's great work being done in that. But yes, and just to clarify, the parent education program has become, in, in essence, our national diaper bank program. Got it. Um, so th thank you. Thanks, Allison. Thanks, Blake. Um, just question then about, and this might be more for Jay, but so it's, I think it's great that you've you know, been taking folks to the site. I imagine, I guess I have kind of a two-parter. Number one is, are people more interested in one building over the other? I would imagine that the building that's a little newer would be more, more exciting to folks. And then number two, um, I mean, affordable housing was the top selection, I think, consistently. Have you given thought to getting an affordable housing developer to go to it? Yeah, so let me answer the first one. Uh, we, we just did a general tour where we brought everyone. So, and we are gonna bring people back together within the next couple of weeks to talk much more specifically. We asked them to go back and think about what they need. The library needs about 10,000 square feet. Uh, a, an infant child care needs seven to 10,000 square feet. So that leaves a lot um, and one building over the other, we don't know. And, and we're going to need to be entrepreneurial about this if we, we want to create something that's self-sufficient. So we also have to look at, um, you know, what what we could do between the two buildings and with the two buildings. So that's that's the A part. The B part on your question is a really good one. And I know I, whatever it was, 26% or 27% of the people thought affordable housing. We've had some discussion about that. We've had discussion with that uh, with some of our affordable housing people, there's two things going on here. One is a general feeling that it wouldn't pencil out um, for affordable housing because of the size of the buildings. And you're, you're certainly not gonna wanna take down the newer building um, and the market is, a, is or the, the older Rada Brothers market has a lot of possibilities in different configurations. Um, the, other, the other piece is, and I wanna be really clear about this, for the city, we have no money. Um, as far as affordable housing and the redevelopment agency has no money. I mean, no money meaning for us, I think our housing trust fund maybe has $7 million and we have demands uh, on that money of shovel ready projects for probably close to $100 million. 
So if we were to go the route, even if it did work for affordable housing, it would be so far down the list of getting resources to do it that it, it doesn't seem like a practical thing to me. But again, the, the affordable housing people that we've talked to said, this is not a place where we could, we could make it pencil out. We have affordable housing going up. Uh, hopefully, we're talking 700 units or so along Stockton Boulevard in, in various configurations. Um, we have um, also on Broadway and 19th, uh, what does EAH have? 130 units, maybe. Um, th there, there is considerable amount in the works that people have applied for that they maybe already have their tax credits, they have their entitlements. We got to get all that built and we probably have a backlog of it. I, I'm guessing on this, but at least five years, if not more, to get some of these projects going. So I, I don't think that's a realistic thing. If you know a developer that wants to come in and thinks he can make he or she can make it work, great, happy to talk to them. Um, but uh, I, I don't, I don't think. Um, let me answer Rosalie's question if I can. I'm confused about who is planning on buying the buildings. Is the city buying it? My hope would be that the city would buy it. Um, and that we would um, find an operator similar to what's happening at, at uh, Fruit Ridge. I don't, I don't see the city operating anything, but if we can put the funds together for the city to buy it, that would be great. And, and Jay, I kind of answered as well in, in a more uh, high level. I think if we can, we're trying to figure out what we need, right? Because um, we've seen, because we have a lot of potential users, we want to be really realistic about it when we go in, um, in terms of what 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 we could do, um, especially considering the the funding needed to do it. Yeah, and and let me just say, and I'm, again, I want to be really clear about this because we we want to solicit uh, information and recommendations from people. We do not have a plan. I do not have a plan. We have a concept and a vision. Uh, moving that into a plan, both programmatically. And financially, there's a lot of work to be done. And we, we, have, not, we have not gotten into that in any depth at, at this point. We have had our city financial people with us when we did the tour, uh, our economic development people, our real estate people. So there's a lot of work to do in that as well. I, I, Jay, I would liken it to kind of the same conversation that, we ha that we're having now. Uh, with the community, um, but with our city and city staff, it's kind of this: what would you want to do with this if we could? Um, and and maybe bringing bringing some of those ideas that we're hearing here today, um, and and maybe fleshing them out a little bit more. Does that seem right. Right. Yeah. So and and maybe the city does a grant to to an organization that buys it. I, I, again, we're open to that. We do not have. Does the library have money to expand? We're checking all that out. We are again. You all now know as much as Allison and I know. Uh, I don't have answers to a lot of questions. Happy to take the questions. Um, the library, I will tell you the library folks are excited about the possibility. We also we have to see how it works. Uh, the, the library has two funds, a city fund and a county fund. The county fund is pretty flush. The city fund is not. So we'd have to figure out operations and fundraising along those lines as well. But the new... Peter Coyle, uh, the new library director, is very excited about the possibility. And actually, Rivka, uh, Allison ran into Rivka, and she wants to help any way she can, who's our former library director. We know, we know there's a void in Oak Park on a library, and if we could do something like this, we think it's, it's in a great location. It's right in the middle of the community, and people certainly know it. And to me, it would work really well with other support services. We wouldn't want to just put it in there and have it by itself. Thank you for that. I know, I know I'm still hopeful we can have a conversation with McGeorge about the old library, uh, but but yeah. <laughs> God, Godspeed, Adrian. Go for it. <laughs> um, well, so you mentioned the Fruit Ridge Collaborative. Mike, I'm looking at Michael Blair. Do, can you just give like the two sentence overview of what that is? Sure. So it used to be an elementary school for many, many years. And then uh, uh, by the name of Judy Smith, um, of the local neighbors. I thought just sitting, uh, this was a closed 
Hey, Michael, Michael, you're a little fuzzy. I don't know if you need to get closer to the mic or because I've never known you to be a fuzzy individual. All right. There you go. Does that work better? Yeah. Great. Um, so let's see. Rivers Community Collaborative uh, used to be Fruit Ridge Elementary. And so uh, then there was a school closure that was in the asbestos. And then they fixed that, came back, and then they just had, you know, general school closures in the area. That was one of the targeted schools. So it's that empty for years. And then one of the local residents, Judy Smith, um, stepped up, made a lot of noise, uh, got with the school board and, and uh, with some help from a lot of other folks in the community, got it open. And what it is now is more of a nonprofit center. So there's about 20, 25 nonprofits um, that, that run through there, everything from um, anger management to um, Black Mothers United to a host of other ones that are in there. And there's a um, management group now that takes it over. And then we have a board as well uh, for any type of tenant issues. So it's, it's, a, it's been around for a while and serves the community, continues to you know, be, a, be a place where folks can rent out the auditorium and we have just various uses for either the tenants or just the community. You know, we're able to kind of expand and, and it's not an elementary anymore, of course. It still looks like an elementary school. So there's a lot of um, you know, tenant improvement work that could be done to make it into something more. But as for right now, it's, um, you know, those, those, matter of fact, NAACP moved in recently as well. So there's just a, a very wide variety of folks that are in there and uh, continuing to serve the community. Thanks for that. Um, do folks have just additional questions um, for, for Blake or Jay or others around reuse of the buildings? Kelsey? Yeah, um, I apologize if I just, I might have just missed this. I wasn't able to attend the meeting in June. Um, I'm curious if the food bank has made any sort of formal commitment to, um, to sell the space to like a community-based organization or to the city for some sort of social service purpose, or um, if that's still kind of up in the air, I would imagine, you know, it's just given the way that the neighborhood has changed, very expensive real estate. And I know the organization has a, you know, responsibility to its own mission. Um, so I'm curious about that. And then I'm also just curious if the Arata Brothers building has some sort of historic you know, protection or, or something that would prohibit someone from de demolishing the building. Yep, so Kelsey, no historic uh, designation and we do not have a commitment, but I'm spending lots of time listening. And I mean, at the end of the day, you already said it. I mean, the the sale of the building is going to allow us to further our mission, particularly to feed people. A lot of folks may not know how expensive food banking is, uh, even outside of a, a uh, inflationary uh, kind of time. But you know, feeding 250,000 people a month is is where we want to make sure we can sustain that. So no formal commitment, but you know, uh, I I certainly appreciate the the meeting today and the meeting in June, because I think people have a lot of um, excitement around what, what could be. Uh, but at this point, to be honest with you, we don't, we don't have, like Jay said, we don't have a lot of people like breaking down our doors uh, to, to buy it. And um, just looking at the pie in terms of where people's uh, uh, would like to see uh, what goes in there, um, it's right in, I feel it's right in line, maybe not the affordable housing, that would be, uh, that would be wonderful. But I, like Jay, there's been a lot of people that say it just simply doesn't pencil out. The rest of the pie, I think has great possibilities, but no, no commitment and no historic uh, designation. Yeah, I think there's, there's sort of like a tension here between, you know, the food bank's ability to sell it you know, for max value and therefore advance its, as you said, its ability to feed people. And then us in the neighborhood who maybe don't benefit as much, who, who might benefit more from you selling it for like a hundred grand less, but to the right person, right? Um, well, so that's hey, Adrian, Adrian, just, just to break in, I don't mean to interrupt you. Uh, 
I don't, I don't, the board doesn't, and the people that work for us and volunteer for us and support us, we don't work in a hundred grand increments. I mean, if, if that, that, that's not even in the ballpark. I mean, if, if we, the sale, the a whole meaning of consolidation is so we can sustain ourselves and provide greater impact. If there was a opportunity uh, to sell this building to enhance uh, the benefits to Oak Park community, we would do it in a heartbeat. Um, we're really kind of forging, we're really kind of, this is undiscovered territory. I mean, we don't have a lot of people breaking down our, our, our doors right now saying, this is what we want to do. And I suspect it's two reasons. One, uh, the real estate market's not super hot uh, because of the inflation and, and, and interest rates. And, you know, uh, I, you know we'll, we'll just have to see. But if if there was a benefit, a, a, a hundred, I just don't want people to think hundred thousand dollars is you. I know you pulled that out of the air, but I mean that 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 that's not in the cards. I mean we, we're we respect the community. We've been there for forty something years. I mean you know, but at the end of the day, we are a business, and our business is to stay sustainable so we can feed people the county. But I mean, I, I what I like is is all the all the folks here have some great ideas. And I think, quite frankly, I think people here could advance. I see UC Davis, I see UOP. I mean, you know, if you know people there, I mean, I would say start talking to them uh, and or provide some ideas uh, to folks that you may be connected to in, with those institutions, because that certainly seems like it'd be a good fit. Thank you. Uh, if I could add real quickly, Adrian, if somebody came in and said, we have X amount of dollars and it worked and it was a community benefit, I'm great, but go for it. It's, it's not like it has to be right. what I'm thinking of, but we're trying to fill a void and, and see this as, as uh, Blake said, this is a real potential and it's, there's an opportunity here. So we're trying to make sure that at a minimum, we can keep things going if if so, again, if somebody else came in and with the right amount of money and, and worked it out with the food bank, we're good with that. Thank you, uh, Chris. Yeah, Blake, uh, I have a question. Actually, I'm trying to text in respond to you yeah. earlier. You said, if I understood it right, you're looking for partners that can help you better serve the communities once y'all move to the new location. Yeah, so right, so, and, and we're open, I mean, it really doesn't have to be something specific right now. So right now we have nine food agency partners, mostly faith-based. Um, and if those existing faith-based organizations, for example, we talked, you know, we, we've talked to several of the faith-based organizations in Oak Park, are, are they interested? And again, I'm sorry to focus on food, but that, that's where my mind goes first. Um, but then we talk about family services, um, particularly our clothing program. I, I, I think, again, there's a lot of social service going on in Oak Park. So if, if there's a way, regardless of the type of program that we can add value, we absolutely would like to um, uh, help as we transition and, and, and move up to the North area. Uh, we're all ears. So I'm being asked if uh, the grocery stores, what would you require of them if they wanted to look in partnering with you providing food to your uh, organization and what would they need to do? Well, so Chris, we, we, have, we have 150 retailers that we already pick up daily. So, we, so part of being the regional food bank is we actually manage the contracts for all of the grocery stores to be picked up. Walmart, Target, Save Mart, Raley's, uh, Costco, Sam's Club, all of those, all of that food, the, the grocery store food goes to us or our partner agencies, mainly directly to our partner agencies. So we have, I'm going to guess uh, it changes daily, but we have about 130 food agencies that are on contract with us. And I'm going to say about 50% of those pick up most of the grocery store food in Sacramento County currently. Okay. And so if, if, if there's somebody, 
if there's an organization or a, or, or a faith-based community or a church that wants to become part of our network, there's a whole process to go through that. And, and we would welcome uh, folks. Part of, the, part of our job as a regional food bank is to look at areas of Sacramento County that are lacking food distribution assets. And we make investments in those areas to try to bolster that up so we could equi equitably distribute food as best we can. Okay, so last question, what I'm looking at is, sure. if, if they were to buy a quantity of something for their stores and it's not moving as quickly as they wanted to, and if they by choice wanted to uh, connect with you all and distribute that to you, what would be the procedure in doing that? They just call us. If they're at any grocery store in Sacramento County, so we, we can't operate outside of Sacramento County. Each, each food bank, each county has one regional food bank. So if this grocery store has food that they want to, do, they want to uh, donate, all they have to do is call us. There, there is, it, it, for the donation, there is no protocol. And generally speaking, we'll go pick it up and distribute it to the community, or we will find an, a partner organization within our network to go get it. It doesn't need to come back to Sacramento Food Bank. It, we'd rather, you know, but it, but it will, it does have to go to one of our partner agency network. Okay, so like San Joaquin County and yeah. Stanislaus County? Got you. Yeah, uh, yeah, yep. That, uh, that particular, Chris, that is a second harvest food bank of Stanislaus and San Joaquin. They're a wonderful food bank and they would donate it to them. Thank you. Barbara, then Rosalie. Or Rosalie. Sorry, oh, sorry, I was, I was multitasking. Um, just a quick question about the, um, somebody asked previously about the historic possibility of the building, which is, what's the name of the building again? I forget. Well, we, we name it because the, so, so in 19, in the 1930s, the original name of the grocery store was the Arata, A-R-A-T-A, -A, Arata Brothers Grocery Store. Mm -hmm. It technically was the, well, they say it technically is that was the first push cart grocery store west of the Mississippi, but the building itself does not have a historic designation. So I just want it for anybody who would be interested in trying to research or get some information on oh, yeah. that because the city did have an ordinance that it's, that precluded any structure 50 years or older being torn down but it would seem to me there would be some history associated with that building not that there's any necessarily architectural significance but just the history of it in the community and i would think somebody you know in, in or, because i would hate to see it torn down that's why i'm just bringing that up so Thanks. Good point. Thank you, Rosalie. Oh, I was just wondering as far as um, it being, it's not listed for sale right now. Oh, it is, it is. We it just is. don't, okay. yeah, it's okay. actively It's actively for sale. Okay, so that's why you said nobody's, uh, I just, I hadn't heard that, so I wasn't sure. Yeah, I mean, to be respectful of the neighborhood, we're not plastering signs all over. I mean, it, 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 to, for us, this this is the whole purpose of today's meeting, in my mind, is as we haven't really entertained a lot of folks, we just put this on the market. So it, it's, you know, in my in conversations with people that may be interested, some people have said UOP, UC Davis, there's a lot of good opportunity. You know, this is food, if you will, pardon the pun, food for thought for me, because you know, obviously, I, I've been in the neighborhood working for 27 years, I would love for it uh, to be the right buyer. Uh, but again, um, if we had this conversation in a month from now, it may be different, but people aren't knocking down our doors going, hey, we're gonna, we want to do this. Okay, so they can, if there's, you're it's probably looking for a group of, it's not ready, ready. a group that would be willing to, to buy it. And we're hoping to come up with that, Jay, that city buyer, you know, that that's, um, could keep it as something for the community rather than just another, I'm just thinking of the whole gentrification and how, you know, we've been looking for some way to balance that. And this seems like a perfect opportunity, but how, how to go about that. So thank you. You bet. Are the buildings 
I know they're posted for sale. Are they posted together or are they like separate? No, I mean, our, our, I mean, our goal would be to, to, I mean, I, I mean, I say this lightly because I mean, I don't, I can't predict the future, but our goal would be to sell the campus. That makes most sense. Um, uh, but again, I mean, we haven't had buyers come in and say, I want to buy one and not the other, uh, there that we haven't had those conversations yet, but I mean, again, for, for, um, I think it'd be wonderful if, if the campus, if it, you know, if there was the ability to sell the campus, uh, would be nice, but yeah, we don't, we haven't got that far in the, in the discussions. And a quick, quick question, Blake, I think I know the answer, but I just want to make yes. sure it's just the two buildings, right? The only other properties. Yeah. On the, on the very corner, Chris of third Avenue and 33rd street, there's that little brick house. Hmm. It, it used to be an old dental clinic in the 1950s and 60s. We own that house. I think it's 1,700 square feet. Yeah, on the on the southwest corner of no, I'm sorry, southeast corner of Third Avenue and 33rd Street. Okay. All right. Good to know. Thanks. And Adrian, if I could, I, I have to jump off in about five minutes, so I don't know if there's any Thank other you. questions. We 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 our commitment in our offices as we work through this, we will keep people informed. Um, again, I'm making no commitments. We don't know if it will work. We don't know if we can put the necessary funds together. We don't know if the library has enough operating. We're at the questions stage, um, but with a vision of, of creating something here that would be good for the community um, and be again, be self-sufficient because the city doesn't have funds to, do operations on something like this. Um, so we're, we're trying to figure out what all that looks like. And again, happy to talk to people individually. If you have ideas, call our office and we'll set up. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I feel like there's just a lot of money available, you know, at the state and federal level for projects of various types. And if we can maybe get creative, maybe, maybe there's something, there's a there there in terms of, in terms of a, a use that that addresses community need and, and it, it may be incremental where maybe you have the library if we can afford to buy it and you have the library come in and then you add things as you go maybe you do an rfp for other types of social services for people to come in i think all of those things are on the table to talk about uh process wise we do not have a plan i want to stress that we do not have you know something that is set in stone of how it's going to happen we're trying to figure out how to make it happen at this point. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, uh, please forgive me. This is a very sentimental question, but it's really been on my heart. Um, Blake, I'm wondering if you could share a little bit about how Father Madigan is doing and um, kind of if he's had the opportunity at all to kind of speak to this transition and, and if he's at all involved in the planning process, his vision for um, the organization's work and for the community is so beautiful and so important. And I'm, you know, was done with such intention in that space. I'm curious, kind of. Yeah, great question. I talk to him all the time. He's one of my best friends. He hired me. I went to him and told him this. And Father Madigan, I think there's two sides of the coin. One, he's very proud of the work and he understands the situation and the demand for food resources and being a county food bank. Uh, a little bit sad, uh, obviously, because historically we've been there a long time, uh, but but sees that there's an incredible opportunity uh, for us to have a greater impact. So he was very supportive. Uh, but I think nostalgic wise, he was like, gosh, you know, this is this is uh, this hurts a little bit because we've been here so long. But uh, but we had a long discussion about, you know, good solid businesses, whether they're nonprofits or not, evaluate their business and make changes that for the greater impact and, and, and sustainability. And I think him and I had a long conversation about that and he was supportive. Thank has, you. has he shared, you know, hopes for what uh, the space might become? Have we shared with Father Madigan? Has he shared with you? No, no. I mean, I, I, I gave him a little info on our June meeting. Thank you. Rosalie, was that a new hand? 
Yes, it was, but I had a hard time remembering what my question was, except that, um, can you put the addresses in the chat? I wasn't sure if he meant there were, that that house goes with the big building, because we're, you know. Here yeah, we, there. Here we are, right here, there it is. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, three, there's three separate APNs. There's the 3308, 3300, and 3333. Okay, so that the the, the house is the Rada Brothers, the house and the yeah. So Rada Brothers is four threes, thirty three, thirty three. The the education uh, technology facility is thirty three oh eight, and the the house is thirty three hundred. All Third Avenue. Oh, all Third Avenue. Okay. Yep. Oh yeah, that's right. The house is facing there. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Great. Well, we really appreciate you taking the time, and we sure hope that. As a community, we can come together and figure out some way to keep this for the whole community. Well, you're you're welcome, and you're welcome. I mean, I'm 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 very uh, honored that you guys took the time to to put this thing together, Adrian. Really, thank you for um, the OPNA work and and your uh, work associated with this, uh, Councilmember Jay. Um, really appreciate everything that you've done and helped facilitate and, and all the ideas that you've shared, I think is wonderful. But, you know, again, I do, you know, I, I got to jump off here pretty quick and I know you guys have other business, but I just, I just want to reiterate that um, we are going to do everything moving forward. I mean, we actually have a really wonderful opportunity. I, I, you know, I, I, I think there's some tension where there's the food programs or the food work that we do and the family services, but Actually, this gives us an incredible opportunity to actually have a significantly greater impact and understanding that, you know, we're feeding double almost the amount of people we were before the pandemic, and that's not going to slow down. For us, it makes good business sense. For somebody living in Oak Park, it may not. Um, but my suggestion is, is take, your, take the time to look into the nine feeding agencies um, they're wonderful, uh, mostly faith-based folks. They're doing incredible work. We are going to continue to work with them significantly. Uh, there's other community-based organizations in Oak Park that are doing some family service work that we hope to continue to add value to. And, and I think you'll find at the end of the day, in the future, uh, that Sacramento Food Bank and Family Services will have more resources to be able to invest in all the communities uh, when it comes to some of these services. So we, uh, we are fully committed to Oak Park. And, and if I could add, and, and I, I want to thank Blake for coming tonight as well, and you all for making this, I think, a productive conversation. Um, these are emotional issues in a lot of ways, and, and the services they provide are important. So to be able to figure out how we can do things and take advantage of an opportunity that's before us here. Uh, my commitment is that as we have something to say, we will let you know. And if people want to talk about this more and have ideas, uh, our office is, is very much willing to do that. So I got to get going. Have a good night, everyone. And uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. Well, uh, we have some other stuff to, to go through, um, basically opening things up for announcements. Um, if anyone would like to share upcoming events, the goings on or anything they'd like to talk about. I got one. Go for it. Let's see if I can pull it up here. Hopefully everybody can see that. This is a job fair that is gonna be at Immaculate Conception. There we go. It's going to be on Friday, September 9th. And this is based around construction and non construction. So there's uh, some healthcare, various different things in there. And the theme, as you can see up top, is taking it to the streets. And the concept with that is a lot of times for you know really good jobs, people have to go to the location to apply. Uh, what we're doing is we're actually bringing the jobs to the neighborhood. So we had one in Del Paso Heights. Uh, we had another one at Fruitridge Community Collaborative. We're having this one, Immaculate Conception, a little deeper inside Oak Park. And then we're going to go to Meadowview and just kind of bounce it around. But what we're doing is bringing out all these uh, union affiliates and they're bringing all their equipment. So it's really a hands-on type of event where folks can 
really get a sense of what it's like in that particular trade. So for instance, the sheet metal folks, they'll bring out a bunch of sheet metal, let you play with it, all the different tools. Um, they'll bring out the blow torches so you can actually walk away. You can make a toolbox and walk away with it. Um, the folks bring harnesses. There are some um, um, carpenter folks that are going to be building small houses. So it really is uh, all the attendees uh, opportunity to come in, ask a lot of questions, um, get their hands dirty. Uh, we have like uh, brick laying, cement, all kinds of stuff. So we're really trying to target the community to um, connect with folks that normally wouldn't find these opportunities. So if anyone has uh, any questions or an ability to get this out to the public, we'd really appreciate it. I'm trying to see if I'm missing anything. These are some of our partners down here that are helping out to make this happen. We're going to have a DJ, so it's going to be, you see the word block party up top, so we're going to try to make it fun. And uh, anyway, just kind of have a good time. So rare opportunity, I think, uh, but I think it'd be really good for the community. So any questions? I just, I feel the need to say that, of course, the food bank was founded in the basement of Immaculate Conception. So shout out really? to them that work in the neighborhood, yes. Did not know that. In, in the basement of Immaculate Conception on Broadway. That is some awesome history. I did not know that. Yeah, that building now is going to be um, purchased by, um, wait, Highlands Charter Community uh, School. So they they have a whole host of campuses. So this is one of their new campuses that they're opening up. So we're partnering with them to be able to, you know, help them open it up and introduce it to the community. So but I did not know that basement history. That's good. Thank you. Very cool. All right. So let me stop sharing. How do you get a, can you put the link to the flyer? Uh, the yes, chat? it actually was just produced today. Uh, just got the final edit. So we'll be posting it on the uh, Facebook page as well and a bunch of other places. So we'll make sure you get a link to it. I see Stephanie Van Allison. Wonderful. I actually have two events that I'd like to share with you. The first is going to be on September the 16th. It's called the End of Summer Music and Fun Fest. So like um, Michael just shared, we're going to have a DJ and we'll have food and it's going to be a two hour event from six o'clock p.m. to eight o'clock p.m. It will be at City Church. And really the focus is just um, end of summer. Just come out and have some fun, have a little food on us, dance a little. We'll have raffles and big fun. The other is our Harvest and Health Festival. That's going to be on October the 22nd, which is a Saturday. And that's going to be from 11 o'clock a.m. to 2 o'clock p.m. We are looking at uh, having about 20 different vendors out there. Uh, it's going to be an exciting time. Last year was so much fun. I expect to have at least 300 people come through or more. Um, so feel free to, to come and join us there. It's a free event. We've shared both of these um, flyers with Adrian. It should be on your website already. But um, if not, I'll make sure that you get that information. Again, those are the two events, September the 16th and October the 22nd. That's it. Thank you. Exciting events. Let's go to Allison. Hi, everyone. I have two um, things. I'm trying to pull it up. The one thing I wanted to make sure we announced and is that um, what uh, the D5 team and Jay is actually graciously agreed to um, continue to sponsor uh, free admission at McClatchy Pool and actually Mangan Park Pool um, at both the pools for the rest of the summer, not just on Monday nights. So the pools will be open until um, August 21st is kind of pool season. And here's the, the hours here. Um, it currently says it's uh, family night on Monday. Um, we just got the okay from aquatics to go ahead and um, make it free to everyone for the full rest of the season. Um, not much, but it's still hot and it's a great time to be able to do that. Um, so that's McClatchy Park Pool. Um, we're excited about that. We've gotten great turnout. Um, we also would love uh, to recruit lifeguards. And that's one of the things that we, that, that prevents the hours. So the more lifeguards we have, the more we can keep our pools open. Um, so that's the first part, um, the first announcement. The second one is going to be um, about um, ongoing conversations and communications about Aggie Square. 
Um, there is a general, uh, our quarterly community meeting um, on Aggie Square and the update, and I'm going to post some information in the chat as well. Um, and that is um, run and facilitated by UC Davis. Um, and they have, um, they're going to do it in person um, at the Aggie Square launch space. And that is going to be on uh, doo -doo -doo, August 17th from 5.30 to 7 p.m. Um, and I will put the link in the chat and I will um, upload so the there's a link to register and I will um, I have to download the, the flyer, but I will upload that to the, the chat and send it to Adrian as well. So that's August 15th. I um, hope to see you all there. And they are pretty good about posting updates and things like that. So if there's anything else, um, please reach out. There's been some some progress. I think it's been a lot of coordination and trying to figure out who the right people are in the room. But I think we're 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 making a lot of progress. So um, that's all I had. Thanks. And what's the launch space? The yeah, launch space is over on um, Stockton Boulevard, by the where Labu used to be. Okay. Right? Yeah. I'll uh, I'll I'll send that over. Um, quick question, Allison, on the pool. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, I see that there's an asterisk saying that on Mondays it's free. Is it free every night or just on Mondays? Yeah. So we, as of yesterday, pool, the aquatics gave us the, I just copied that from the website. Okay. But as of yesterday, we got the go ahead. So it's going to, I should have, I should have cut that out. But basically, uh -huh. for all of the hours posted right now, I will do that. So actually, it's cleaner. Let me no pretend problem. that that didn't happen. <laughs> it's okay. And I'll take away your asterisk. And uh, it says Sunday coming soon. Do we know the hours for Sunday? I think that they're not. They don't think they changed. It was if we can find lifeguards, we will we will make okay. it open on Sunday. Um, but it. they just are really swamped. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Rosalie, then Chris. Okay. I, you can probably see the picture of the church on my. Um, yeah, so there on August 13th, which I know is at this, the same day as the Celebrate Oak Park, we have our regular um, Oak Park Fix-It Cafe, and just that's right on Broadway at uh, 36th Street and right to the left of the main entrance, there's a grass area, so if it's not too hot, we've been having our Fix-It Cafe out there. We are looking for people to bring stuff to fix. We have sewing, bikes, um, electrical, knife sharpening, and some kids' activities. But it's all neighbors, just helping neighbors get stuff fixed. And um, we've had a really great turnout. We didn't have it in July because we took, we took vacation. But um, we would love to see people out there, and we're always... Um, looking to spread the word too because it's you know it's hard when you're just a group of neighbors to get the word out so um, just help us get the word out we are on Facebook Oak Park Fix It Cafe and it's uh, uh, set up is at 10 and it's from 11 to 2 for the actual event wonderful thank you Chris yes, I have a quick question about the uh job fair thing what caught my attention is was that is that geared towards only union employers or did we give private employers an opportunity to show what they do this is primarily for union and the reason why is because it's sponsored by the sacramento building trades union so this is their event and um i'm working with pwt where we're pretty much doing the event for them uh, but they are the the main host for the event. Okay. So they want to kind of show uh, showcase all their uh, union affiliates. Awesome. Well, I have, and, and please, you know, continue to raise your hands. Um, but I have a couple really exciting announcements that I know Alice also has been sharing on on um, social media. But there's a ton of opportunities for artists who live in Oak Park or live in South Sacramento to do some really cool projects. And then the, these deadlines are coming up pretty fast. So um, one project that OPNA is involved in is basically we're offering $40,000. These are Caltrans funds to an artist to do a mural or a public art project at the Second Avenue Highway 99 underpass. 
Um, and so that deadline is actually coming up really quick. It's in four days on August 8th. But again, that's $40,000 for an artist. They will have to pay for their own materials. Um, but it's a really cool opportunity through, through Caltrans and in partnership with Soul Collective in the city of Sacramento's arts and culture um, department. Uh, and then additionally, the Franklin Neighborhood Development Corporation has a, an even larger um, award of $72,000 for an artist um, to do a, the, the 21st Avenue and Highway 99 underpass, um, almost like a, in an effort to reconnect the Franklin corridor with South Oak Park area, which of course was divided by Highway 99. Um, so this is a, a mural at that space and then uh, at a, a nearby auto body repair shop as well. So it's two total murals for $72,000. Um, and that deadline is August 25th. So there's a little more time on that. And then all down Highway 99, they're doing, they're looking for five separate artists to do um, designs for a steel art panels that'll be hung along the highway. Um, so basically looking for people to design almost like vector designs that will be, you know, uh, created uh, and, then, and then mounted. And they're paying each artist $8,000 for two designs. So basically 4,000 bucks per design. Um, and then finally, there's a, a mural project along the WX freeway north of, north of our area um, where they're offering up to 3,500 bucks for artists to do, to help paint or design the columns under the highway. So all this is to say there's a ton of arts projects going on. If you know an artist, please, you know, pass on this information and I will share in the chat shortly uh, the links to each of these opportunities. So really exciting stuff. Um, and then second thing, so this is just our Oak Park Neighborhood Association email newsletter. If you don't get this, leave your email in the chat and we'll make sure you get it. But basically, you know, we, we have neighbor, you know, important neighborhood news. This is this meeting that we're in now. Um, but one of the big things we're working on and that we're really excited about is celebrate Oak Park on Saturday, August 13th. I know it's the same date as the Oak Park Fix-It Cafe, but you can go to both events. Um, this is going to be a free event at McClatchy Park. Um, celebrate Oak Park has been around for over 10 years, and we're going to have free barbecue. We're going to have ice cream, music, all sorts of things. We'll have electric vehicles that folks can uh, can drive and get free ice cream for doing so. And then a ton of like different STEAM and STEM activities, educational activities for the kids. So we're really excited about this event. We hope you come out 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on August 13th. Um, we already talked about the mural. Um, so Caltrans is also working on the fencing up for its pedestrian overcrossings. You can see the, on these orange dots, there's four pedestrian overcrossings basically going from Oak Park South to almost Florin Road. Um, and they want our feedback on what colors to paint each of these. So you can take this survey and I'll post this in the chat as well to share your thoughts on a preferred color and they will paint the winning color um, for the, the fencing on the pedestrian overpass, pretty cool. Um, we're also of course partnering with SMUD um, on an energy uh, reduction pilot where we're, we're actually uh, have some youth going door to door and educating folks about their SMUD bills, how those can be reduced and how they can be more energy efficient in their, their everyday activities. Um, then there's also, an if you're just looking to, to see, see us all in person and hang out and talk about neighborhood issues, we're having a, a neighborhood networking lunch on at Wellspring Women's Center on Thursday, August 18th at 1130 a.m. This is exciting because, uh, um, you know, we get together, we have a nice meal together and we network and talk about important issues uh, and, and solutions to those issues and just get to know one another. Uh, and then of course we have land use updates, including the expansion of this affordable housing uh, development at the former San Juan hotel site. Then OPNA also has signed on um, to the Friends of Oak Park Library effort. Um, so we, we are also um, advocating for a library in our neighborhood. And so it was, it was interesting to hear from uh, Jay and Blake about the opportunities with the old food bank buildings there. Um, but if you're interested in signing this, um, you know, every signature helps and we can share that as well. Again, leave your email in the chat if you don't receive this email newsletter. Uh, and of course, get your COVID-19 vaccination if you haven't already. And I, I don't understand sort of the booster. Uh, maybe someone on the call does know, maybe Michael Blair knows, but I know some folks are eligible for boosters now, so be sure to get those.
Yeah, and and Adrian, there's two events actually this weekend. Um, I don't know if that that flyer didn't. I think there's one at um, that Youth Explosion is hosting at the community center, and one at La Familia. So um, both sponsored by the city and county, and we're just trying to. It's there's backpacks and all sorts of other goodies, um, but also um, good health. Um, um, lots of um, opportunities to just kind of get get checked up and get ready for for the school year. So. Thanks for that, that reminder. Anything else? Any other announcements folks want to share? All right. Well, thanks all for a, a wonderful meeting. Um, thanks, Rosalie. Absolutely. Go to the Fix It Cafe on August 13th, then come by Celebrate Oak Park. Um, and really appreciate folks for making the time and contributing to today's conversation. We'll follow up with more information. So. All right, folks, have a good rest of your evening. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.